Good morning. It's good to have a few minutes together again. Here we are at the end of the week, and I'm very grateful for God and his mercy, and hope you are. If you think about it, you would be, and that God would put up with us uh, is pretty amazing, to say the least. Um, I'm going to look at a lot of verses, just skim through verses, um, um, some, I guess, starting in Matthew, but um, I'll mention some of the Old Testament as well, but uh, I want to talk to you for a couple of minutes this morning about the, the, the words we're going to look at in the Bible is deceive, deceiver, um, about deception. And um, I don't know if there's ever been a, a time in my life when there has been more national deception. And, um, and in, in regards to uh, the medical situation that we supposedly are facing, and, um, and again, I've said this often, and I hope it never changes. It, it, it could very likely change, but in the last couple of years, with the, uh, the, the crisis that's gone on globally, uh, I think it's a man-made crisis. The sickness, man-made or natural, there's no, I have no idea about that, but that it's been made into a crisis is man-made, without a doubt. And um, it's been used, it's been blown up in all the motives. I don't know people's hearts, but something's fishy. And I'm going to talk about that in the Bible. But I want to, uh, I want to just take a minute and uh, show you. And again, um, I don't know if you, can, if you can see these things. So I'm going to tell you what they are. And these are from different countries around the world. But here is a basic graph of COVID deaths. And, um, you know, they start real high and down. Each of those lines is a different country. And, um, and, and basically there was a, a time when there was a lot of deaths. Why? I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. I can just look and see things. But back to where I started a, a minute ago and I got sidetracked. In the year and a half, two years of, of craziness going on in our country, our church has yet to see a death. Um, we've hardly had a death at all of any reason. We've had a couple of deaths, but we've not had a death due to COVID unless there, unless it was a, um, a distant, like a friend of a friend, uh, a missionary we support. But as far as our church members, nobody has gotten COVID and died. Nobody has died with um, a broken leg and COVID, or they fell out of an airplane and they tested positive for COVID. Not even that. And, uh, and this this horrible global pandemic, and I'm not saying people haven't died, of course they've died, but I'm just saying that um, sickness is real, death is real, that's why we want to get people saved, so we're all going to heaven, but um, but the, the the issue of this, uh, this global panic, um, and again, our church isn't massive, but you'd think in two years, if, it, if this was such a terrible traumatic thing, some folks that have gone to heaven, and good for them, by the way, if I get sick and die and go to heaven, you can, you know, you can rejoice at my funeral. I'm, I'm happy. You're the one stuck down here with these idiots running the country and the world. But um, I, I don't buy into it. Now, I'll give you some biblical reasons in a minute. But uh, here's another graph. And this is of the Dutch population. And again, you may not be able to see this, but you can find these. But the thing that's interesting to me here is the bottom. And it's so small, I got to get my glass on they don't even chart deaths under 50 years of age. There are so few. And uh, it's interesting, at the 90 and up age, there's not many deaths. I guess if you're tough enough to live to 90, COVID doesn't kill you. But the 80 to 89 is the biggest uh, death of the Dutch, Dutch population. But, but they don't even start. They've got to they've stop the line at 49 and under. They couldn't go lower because there's so fewer deaths, they wouldn't show up on their chart. Uh, here's another example, and uh, this is not a graph, so you can't see it, but it's uh, the percentage of deaths um, by age. 65 to 74 is 24 percent of the deaths. The next decade under it is 22. 18 to 44, 3.9 percent, um, and 17 and under. Uh, nine deaths, 0.06% of the deaths. Almost no one under 30 is dying of COVID. And certainly almost no one under 20 is dying. And yet we've got our kids masked up 
and uh, jammed into these schools in the most unreasonable circumstances. And I believe one of the big causes is you, you, you introduce socialism and, and, uh, and tyranny young. You start communism, the Lenin and Stalin did it. You start working on the children. You get these children used to being in subjection, doing the uncomfortable, the awkward, the unreasonable, because the government tells them to. And I think that's why these schools, it's certainly not medical, absolutely could not be medical. And every graph from every country in the world tells you that. Um, but, but still, what's interesting in, the, in these statistics is uh, all these deaths from 74 and under still are only 50% of the deaths. And there's a lot to be said there. I won't go there, but it's, it's, a, it's a big corruption. Now, here is, um, again, another bar graph. And if you go to, you, you can't even see numbers starting until 34 years old, 25 to 34. There's a little tiny speck and the young are not vulnerable, but uh, 85 and up. And I just tried finding, I went back to 2010 and said, just uh, give me the number of deaths by age uh, in 2010. So go back uh, over a decade. You know, it's interesting. People over 80 died more than people who were 20. And people who were 60 to 80 died more than people that were 40 to 60. Isn't it interesting? You know, older people die. Uh, to, unless they live forever, which they're going to do in heaven, older people at some point, there's a higher mortality rate of older people than younger people, whatever the reason. Car accidents. Go ahead and, and do a search of car accidents by age, and there's a reason that um, insurance rates go up and people do and don't keep their driver's license. They get older, their reflex time is slower. Uh, eyesight's not as good. Um, reaction times are not the same as when they're young. And then it's also young people, of course, because young people are idiots and they drive crazy and they think they're indestructible. But there again, another graph showing young people are not dying. They're not even, they're, they're hardly vulnerable at all to this thing. Um, up to the age of 24, there's maybe a red line at 24. Here's another one. And some of these are for this one. This one is from Poland. And uh, look, at this is a graph by ages. And so from 40, they have their, the first line that you can see is at 40 years old. Why are we shutting down businesses? Why has the government tried to control our schools? Why restaurants? Why all this 40 and under? Where are the deaths? They're in the elderly, like I said, and typically elderly people die. If there was no COVID, you don't think older people would die? Now, they're saying they're dying from COVID. I don't buy that, and it, maybe they are dying with it, from it, uh, in addition to it. I don't know, but I know this. I don't trust the medical world anymore. Um, here's another one. This is United States 2020. So this is last year, and it should be relatively accurate. And again, my point today is young people. They're, the young people, you don't even see the graph starting to show um, deaths until you get into the mid 40s. They don't even show up below that. And of course, people 85 and older are dying in a more increased rate. They're more vulnerable or whatever. It's just a, it's just a reality. Um, now here's a, um, it, anyway, there's so many statistics and I won't take time to go into all these, but um, I would like to just assure you that we have a God who is faithful, and uh, um, I got to type something in here. I lost my my uh, uh, my verses here, so now I've got them back. Um, we've got a God who's faithful, and he's good. Uh, we've got a government who is not faithful and is not good. Everybody ought to know that by now. Our government is corrupt. Our political system is corrupt. Our, our media is corrupt terribly corrupt. And I hope you don't sit around watching the news. If you sit around watching the news, you're going to be wearing three masks in the car with a double filtration system on your car air. You're going to have the windows up, not even go through the drive through at McDonald's. You're not going to go to the stores or church. You're going to sit home and isolate yourself. And some people would call that the same as being in prison. Some would call it the same as being dead. Um, we had a great Thanksgiving. We had uh, three of my four kids and their spouse and their families. We had my sister and my mom, and we had a big dinner. And often we'll have other guests from around our church at our house this time, and just that group, but it pretty well fills the house. And um, 
and Christmas time this next week, we're going to have all four of our kids and their kids and grandma and great grandma. And, and, um, man, I'm not missing that. No way. Um, and I'm, I'm in the non-vulnerable age. I'm only 64, but, but, uh, we have bought into a lot and, and, uh, you want to check out some of these doctors. I mean, quality doctors like a Dr. Atlas. Um, there are plenty of medical doctors out there who are anti, um, this whole panic. And, um, some of them are challenging even the, the number of deaths there that are being falsely reported. You know, hospital, if I die of a heart attack, um, the hospital gets no government money, but if I die of, of COVID, the hospital gets a big chunk of money. You, you trust our hospital administration to never play games with statistics. If you do, you're not very prudent and you're too simple. But um, I want to take a, a couple of minutes and, and, and before I get to the scripture, let me just say this, don't, don't fret. If you are fretting over COVID, you're watching too much news. If you're, if you're isolated and you're out of contact with the world around you, you are watching too much news. I heard some doctors talking this last week and they said the number of deaths due to the COVID lockdown not due to COVID, but due to the lockdown, is going to dwarf the number of deaths due to COVID because of drugs and alcohol and, and abuse of spouse, abuse of children, because of suicide. And most of you have seen the numbers. Uh, I just, I don't check stuff all the time, but last March, March of 2020, there were more suicides in California in the month of March 2020 than there were the entire year before the lockdown happened. And again, there's drugs, there's liquor, there's joblessness, there's the panic that the government makes. And, and, the, and the, the media and government drives this panic so that you scream, help me, help me. And, and that's not you scream, help me, help me when you fall off the dock and you can't swim. That's the time to scream, but not when the government's throwing stuff out at you. And I don't buy any of it. But now let me explain why. Let's look at some Bible here. Um, Matthew chapter 24, and I'm not going to give you all the doctrine and theology. I'm going to give you some simple statements. Matthew 24, Jesus said, Jesus answered, Matthew 24, verse 4, Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed that no man deceive you. Now he just makes a statement, but it's in the Bible over and over and over. You need to be careful. There are deceivers. There are demonic deceivers, like the Garden of Eden. The woman was deceived. Adam was in immediate, uh, uh, Adam was in intentional uh, disobedience to God, but the woman was deceived. And uh, a deception has been going on since the Garden of Eden, demonic deception. But there's also financial deception. You know, people sell you this, you know, they say it's a Rolex watch and it's really a Rolaid watch. And, and, um, you know, Nike, some fancy Air Jordan tennis shoes, and they're they're made in China, and they're they're not even made by the same company. That's a knockoff. Someone gave me a pin one day. A, I'm trying to think of the name of it. A very fancy pin. Three. I looked looked it up online. Three four hundred dollar pins, and someone gave me this pin. And uh, man, it's a pin. Just a pin. To me, a pin's a pin. There's nothing in my pocket now. I remember to empty my pocket, but uh, I have as many hotel pins as I have, uh, my pins from a church, pins from a hotel, pins from a youth department. And then once in a while, someone gives me a nice pin, but, uh, and I, and I like it. I like the gift because of who gave it to me far more than the gift. Um, um, but, um, I've got, I've got one pretty nice pin that was made from the deer antlers. And so when I use that pin, it's at home in my desk. I think of those people who gave it to me and, and those people mean a lot to me. Um, but, but a pen's a pen. And, uh, well, anyway, this, this beautiful, whatever, $400, $500 pen, the ink cards ran out pretty fast. So I thought, well, I went to two or three stores and I couldn't even find it. I mean, the stores are around here, Walmart and Target. And, um, so I thought I'll go online. And so I'm trying to find the right pen and the right refill for the pen. And then this thing popped up, how to tell if you have a knockoff. And it showed you pictures of the refills. Well, my refill was a knockoff, which meant my pen was a knockoff, which meant my pen was probably a $3 pen. And then somebody paid 30 for it to thinking they got a $300 pen. <clears throat> they were deceived. They were deceived. 
Uh, so I gave the pen away. <clears throat> and somebody else thought they had a nice pen. But, but uh, beware. Now, we can be deceived. Uh, contracts, um, government, you get deceived by the media. You can get deceived. I mean, um, the right attorneys can deceive a jury. Um, the right, um, uh, I know a guy, I led him to Christ. He was a, a Chicago uh, detective. And um, he said that it was not uncommon, and I don't know who or what, but he said in Chicago, when you know you got a bad guy and you've got to get something on him, he said, to have me at the at talking to the individual while my partner is planting drugs wherever, he said, that is not uncommon. Well, that is deception. They're making it appear like something that it's not. And and was neat, by the way, is he, um, he got saved, baptized, faithfully come to church, um, a professional guy on a bus from North Chicago. And uh, not long after he left um, law enforcement, he said, I cannot do this job in Chicago and be a Christian. The two, they don't go together. But um, deception, it's a reality. You go over a little bit further to verse five. He says, for many shall come in my name, saying I am Christ and shall deceive many. Now, how could somebody show up in your life or my life and say I'm Jesus and deceive people? Who would believe that? But you know what? There's a lot of people. And Jesus said they're going to be deceiving. Down at verse 11, many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. Down at verse 24, there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonder. These people are going to be able to do, they're going to do miracles. And um, in so much that if it were possible that they shall deceive the very elect. And again, for you theologians, Matthew 24 is a is probably all about the Jew during the tribulation, um, probably. Um, but the principle there that deception is a very, very common thing in the Bible. And if you want to go back to your, uh, uh, a little bit further, um, over to uh, the book of Timothy and um, 1 Timothy, and let's look, look at a couple of verses here. Um, 1 Timothy chapter 2, I mentioned Adam and Eve. 1 Timothy 14, Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. And so there was deception in the Garden of Eden. And, and, and Eve was deceived. Adam just chose willfully to do wrong. Well, of course, he loved this girl. And, uh, and women are very powerful. And you ladies that are watching this, you need to understand how powerful your influence is and to be very guarded. You you know, a, a lot of... A lot of less than wise decisions have been made because a woman influenced a man and in spies all the way back throughout history. Women have been used of foreign governments to convince people to do things and to get information out of people because they're very influential. And, and uh, the most influential person in my life besides the Lord is, is no question is my wife. And, um, and so uh, the devil deceived Eve and she influenced Adam to make intentionally the wrong choice. And the human race was was uh, thrown into sinfulness by very nature. Look over to Second Timothy chapter three. <clears throat> Second Timothy chapter three, and look at verse thirteen. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And so. Um, he's warning that as the years pass, this it'll get there'll be more deception and more deception. And most of you know history enough to know that Hitler was put into office by the will of the people. He deceived people, and many times a wicked ruler puts is put into office because he fooled the people, making promises. Um, you know, like Obama, he was very honest and open. He said, I want to fundamentally change America. Well, at least he wasn't lying. He wanted, he does not like, did not, nor does he like America. The idea of capitalism and free enterprise and freedom of people, the idea that the government is to be told how to run things by the people and that the powers of the government are powers that are given to them by the populace. And that's not President Obama. He is a big government, government control people uh, mentality. That's not American. That's socialism or worse, <clears throat> and totalitarianism. It's communism, whatever different variety. And there's some little 
uh, nuances different from one to another, but the bottom line is the government's running the people. And, um, but many, many of political leaders gotten into office lying and deceiving. Um, we got uh, President Biden into office and um, I don't know, I think somebody was deceived. I don't, I can't, I still, I'm never gonna believe he got the votes, I just am not. Um, the crooked votes perhaps, or the counting of the votes crooked perhaps, I don't know, but, but when he couldn't get a dozen people together for a rally and President Trump could get 50,000 three or four times a day, um, you, you can't convince me that, uh, that President Biden earned the White House. Somebody was deceived. And it could be that I'm deceived, but I, I personally don't think so. Um, but anyway, um, and it's good that, we, that we're in America for the moment. We all can have an opinion. Now, 10 years from now, I might go to jail for saying that about our president. But in Titus chapter 3, he admits that all of us at one time have been deceived. Titus chapter 3, verse 3, for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures. Um, we've, we need to have a little mercy with people because everybody can get off. We can be deceived by a person. We can be deceived by a business um, who hasn't bought something that they regretted buying because of advertising or whatever it might be. Um, this thing of deception. Now, if you look over the book of Hebrews in chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 4, very familiar verse, and I talk about it regularly in the various areas of ministry. But uh, in Hebrews chapter 4, uh, how do you keep from being deceived? How do, you, how do you put your guard up? Now, there's a lot of scriptural ways to keep your guard up and to guard against deception. Number one is good counsel. Find good, trustworthy people um, and get advice from them, whether it be about buying a If I'm buying a car, I'm not going to go ask my mom for advice, but my mom knows a lot. Um, and I'd ask advice in her area. Uh, where my dad's still living, I might ask my dad advice about a car. Um, depends on what people are good at. And none of us know it all. So there's always somebody that knows more than me that can give me good advice. And I'm for listening um, to people. This morning I had a situation come up and I prayed, God, uh, I, I've got these people giving me advice. I hope you'll lead them the right way because I don't know. And I'm going to have to trust some people in this, in this uh, decision making here. And ultimately I want to trust God, but, but often the Bible talks about counsel and good counsel and wise counsel, but you don't want to listen to foolish people. Uh, remember the story of uh, Solomon's son, Rehoboam, and Rehoboam listened to his friends instead of listening to the old men who counseled his father. And consequently the kingdom split big old mess. Well, because he listened to the wrong advisors. Now, we start talking about things that will help you not be deceived. And again, I'm not picking on anybody, but, but I see people walking their dog alone. They're alone on the street wearing a mask. There's no reason for that mask. Now, maybe it's an agenda. Maybe they feel like I'm helping the world and <clears throat> I'm a good example. <clears throat> and other people are going to see me and they'll wear a mask and we'll save the world by wearing masks. Well, you're not going to save the world no matter what you do because the world's going to hell. And the population of the world without Christ will go to hell. You want to you want to save the world? Get, uh, start passing out gospel tracts and get people to church. That's what will get, get people saved and you'll get them to heaven and then everything's going to be okay for them. Whether they die sooner or later. But... Um, uh, you know, I'll see somebody in a car, um, two masks and a shield in their car with the windows rolled up. Somebody deceived them unless they, and, and unless they know, I know this is not going to make any difference. I'm doing it because I started my day out and I leave it on all day long. <clears throat> That's fine. <clears throat> Whatever. But I do, I do question, I look, I'm not a chemist, but I, but as a kid in science class, we learned you breathe in fresh air, you breathe out dirty air, and you've got this moist cloth over your face, and you're breathing in and out of it all day long. And, and uh, you're not going to tell me that thing's not full of germs and breeding more sickness. And, and I, I just, you know, and again, I'm not the scientist. I don't know, but I think people have been deceived. Certainly we've been deceived. We've, we've proven that the people keeping the statistics are lying. It's been proven. Um, you know, the, the, the first one that showed up two years ago, I guess it was in Florida, 100% of the people that were tested for COVID virus all tested positive for COVID. Well, you know what? At that point, I'm done. I'm done listening to any statistics because they're lying. 
And if you once you lie to me, I'm not going to trust you. And uh, and you, you, know, you can make a mistake. That's a whole different story. But you know, you think the car was blue, and you know, and your memory's not good, and like me, you're a little colorblind. It turned out to be green. Ah, oh, that's not a different. That's different. But when you're when you're juggling statistics, no way. Uh, as soon as you decide you're going to abort babies, I'm done with you. I'm done. I don't trust you. Um, just what I want, some doctor to work on my little child um, who has no problem aborting babies. I don't trust that doctor to work on my child. And everybody's got to make their decision. <clears throat> but there are people who, who I will and will not listen to. <clears throat> and we've got to make the decisions uh, logically. So how do we keep from being the whole, and again, verse after verse about deception, deception. Titus 1.10 there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers. There are unruly and vain talkers. Boy, don't we have that in the media. When, when you have to attack me or I have to attack you because you differ from me, somebody's not being honest because we can differ. And uh, we may be able to even discuss it and still differ. We may discuss it and one of us change or we may not discuss it. But if you try to destroy me or I try to destroy you, obviously somebody's point is so weak, they have to destroy the one with the other opinion out of fear of protecting their own opinion. I don't need to destroy anybody because of my faith in this book. This book will take care of itself. I'm just a dumb little man in a little speck of the universe. And, uh, and I'm living this little short window of time. This is an eternal book. Uh, I don't have to explain this book any more than I've got to explain a gun. The, the, you pull the trigger and it shoots. And uh, this is an incredible book. Now this, we're in Hebrews 4. There's a world full of deceivers. And I said, one thing is get good advice. Be careful. Be careful who you listen to. And again, I'm done with any politician of any party who's pro-abortion. I'm done with them. I don't, I don't trust them. I don't trust them with anything. I don't trust them with the economy, with immigration. I don't trust them with voting because they are committing to me the most vile and corrupt thing they could, the murder of an innocent baby. And and I'm not going to trust them. And so that takes away about half of, of the politicians right there and the media and the uh, universities. And so that begins to limit who I listen to. So get the most... Uh, straight, clear, uh, reputable counsel. But I'll tell you the biggest thing is Hebrews 4.12. It says the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. So this Bible is, is like a sword. And But I want you to notice what it does. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit. As you read this book, fill your mind with it, memorize it, meditate on it. What happens, it, it will divide the soul and the spirit. Now, the spirit is the spiritual things, the good things, things of God. The soul is not necessarily sinful, but it's body. It's the, not body. It's the, it's what, the soul is the real me that lives inside. It's my emotion, my intellect, my will. It's that I like chocolate and you like butter pecan and, and that soul stuff. It's that um, my knees aren't good enough. I don't want a Corvette. I want to, I like my truck. I scoot straight into my truck. And um, uh, I want a vehicle a little higher. Um, uh, I like, uh, just because of our lifestyle, we've got the uh, property we take care of where my mom lives in our own place. And I want to be able to haul things from the lumber yard. And I, I don't, I don't need a Porsche. Um, but um, that, but the, the word of God will divide the soul and the spirit. My soul gets proud. My soul gets selfish. My soul gets covetous. My soul um, gets uh, um, arrogant and I, I want to look good. And those are all wrong motives. And um, then there's soul that's not wrong motive. It's just it's just worldly. You know, I like classical music and you like country and Western or whatever. Um, those are the soul, the emotion, the intellect, the will. But the spirit, that's the things of God. That's prayer and Bible and spiritual activities and soul winning and teaching Sunday school. As you read this book, it'll help you see what's spiritual and what's soul. And again, all soul is not bad. I, I ate uh, eggs this morning. And I like eggs and I like cheese on my eggs. And, and uh, I'd rather have an English muffin than sourdough. That's just, that's just me. And, um, and so there's differences and, and, um, 
I used to like the idea of living in Montana or Wyoming, somewhere up north where there'd be snow and good hunting and good fishing. Well, as I get older, I don't want to shovel snow. I'll just take liberal California or maybe shift over to Arizona, Nevada, um, somewhere like that, New Mexico, where they don't grow anything but sand and snakes. But see, that soul, I want to live where it's pretty. I want to live where it's green. I want to live on the ocean. That's soul, nothing sinful about that. But the Bible, as you and I read this, it'll begin to divide what's spiritual and what's not. But look on. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents, intentions of the heart. As you get reading this book, tell you what will happen. You'll begin to see motives. You'll begin to... Uh, I remember the first time I heard President Obama speak, he was running for office, and I thought, that man is un-American, and that man is corrupt. And uh, philosophically, I don't think he'd be a, a horrible father or husband or whatever like that, and I think he cared about people. But he didn't care about America. His political and his historical and his religious perspective was corrupt. And it says... Uh, the joints of the it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Well, as President Obama got into the White House and began implementing his, his policies, he fulfilled everything that most of us knew, that he was un-American, that he was not pro-church, that he was not pro-Christianity. He was certainly anti um, old fashioned patriotism and flag waving. You know, his wife saying for the first time in my life, I'm proud to be an American. You know what? These immigrants coming over here from other countries, they walk in, they love it here. And they're so thankful. And some might say, well, they're uneducated. They're educated enough to know the difference between the messed up world and a place where there's some freedom. And see that the, the, the Bible will divide and show us the intentions of the heart, the thoughts and the intents. And, and I'll tell you, if you want to not be deceived by this, I, I hear people say things about, about the medical situation we're in. And I think that's just silly. That is ridiculous that you would put little children in masks eight hours a day. That is ridiculous, especially considering those graphs we looked at. It's just ridiculous beyond words. Now, I want to just uh, encourage you, stay in your Bible, trust your Bible, and God is going to take care of everything, and it's all going to be okay.